presenting the CW Crew. Hey everybody, John Boss. I'm extremely excited. Uh, very awesome opportunity. We're talking with Mackenzie Phillips. She is a book author, video copywriter, script writer, singer, actress, and valued public advocate, and so much more. Mackenzie, thanks so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you, John. Nice to meet you. Your history and your struggles have been very public, so a lot of people know about your background. But obviously, you've come to a place now where, um, I mean, at the end of your book, High on Arrival, you you were able to say, I'm free. And you've had people intervene in your life to get to where you are today. Tell us about that. Well, before I go on, I do want to say that I uh, have been working in treatment, not as a patient, but as a provider for over eight years. And I'm the director of referral relations at Breathe Life Healing Center here in Los Angeles. So I'm not just an advocate. I work full-time in the treatment world. But freedom, freedom. I, uh, you know, I s suffered with a raging substance use disorder and unresolved trauma uh, for so many years. And people would say, what is wrong with that woman or, or that girl? It went from what's wrong with that girl to what's wrong with that young lady to what's wrong with that woman? Like this went on for years and um, I could not maintain stability. I couldn't maintain my recovery um, because I had so many unresolved issues that I just thought if I just didn't think about it, if I just pretended it never happened, I would be okay. I never really understood that, that the body keeps the score, that, that the trauma lives in the in the nervous system and so i never really understood how to recover i thought it was just about putting down the drink putting down the drug putting down the pipe whatever it was was enough and it wasn't and so i had to do some deeper work in order to be able to say write that sentence i am free now that doesn't mean that every day is roses and puppies, although mm -hmm. most days are pretty darn good. Um, you know, recovery isn't a linear journey. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, I've been sober a long time, um, but if time were the bellwether of wellness, nobody would ever relapse. Because mm -hmm. I, I have a, a close friend who relapsed after 18 years. I relapsed after 10 years. So when people always say, oh, how long have you been sober? I'm like, well, if it really mattered, I'd tell you, but I don't think it does because time doesn't necessarily treat nor does it necessarily heal this thing. It's what mm -hmm. you're doing in the day you've been given, if that makes sense, which I think it does. Absolutely. And a lot of people know your background, your history. And I mean, you were kind of plunged into this lifestyle, so didn't really have a chance from the beginning as far as, you know, getting into this. In, into the substance abuse and just finding yourself there and in it already. Uh, your your father being Papa John from the Mamas and the Papas, and you talk extensively about your guys's uh, your complicated relationship in your book and um, how you forgave him and everything. And actually, at one point, you were singing in the new Mamas and the Papas. My question for you is based on that relationship and going through everything you've gone through, forgiving him. Can you look back at? his memory and the, those songs, for example, and have good memories and, and see some good things that took place there? Or is it all negative when you look back at that? So I just want to say this. Remember, anyone watching and you, forgiveness isn't for the other person. Mm -hmm. I needed to earn the right to talk about forgiveness by forgiving. Um, now, does that mean I'm like, okay, so what you did was cool with me? Absolutely not. But forgiveness is very beautiful because again, this word freedom keeps coming up. Me forgiving my father uh, allowed me to have freedom. You know, I'm able to separate the man from the music. I'm also able to remember, like, now this is very, very important. Uh, this is important to me anyway. Uh, undiagnosed mental illness, untreated and undiagnosed mental illness, uh, a raging substance use disorder, and a heavy duty case of narcissism make for the perfect storm of horrible, unthinkable things to happen. For many years, I carried the belief 
that it was my fault, that I was complicit, that uh, I was bad and dirty and wrong. And through the work that I've been able to do and I've been able to understand, because I think so many of us carry other people's shame. Uh, it, it's not mine to carry here. Even though you're no longer alive, I refuse to carry your shame. Mm -hmm. I want to be free. I want to live free. And so that that was really powerful for me. I am able to remember, I'm able to remember my father in a way that I'm comfortable with. You know, the thing about the thing about it is that my dad was a, a tortured genius. Like that doesn't absolve him for the things that he did, not mm -hmm. just to me, but to in business and other people, the way he lived his life, but the music speaks for itself. That is why these songs are still a part of the consciousness of, of the world because they, they, they're classics. They'll never not be important. Growing up with, with that music your entire life and then being a band member, what, what's your favorite song, Mamas and the Papa song? Oh my God, I really love 1230, Young Girls Are Coming to the Canyon. I think that's an incredible song. Look Through My Window, of course, California Dreamin', Straight Shooter, great song. All right, so next question. So you also talked about in the past, like when the book came out and whatnot, um, you had some, the, your family had some, a lot of pushback actually. And then there was a lot of separation, eight years I think went by, you guys didn't talk. Mm -hmm. What's that, how is that? Uh, evolved over the time has that has that gotten better um I am very close with my family members I mean look, look I I'm a classic avoidant if anyone understands um those type of terms I mean I I, I don't necessarily find people a source of comfort and you're going to hear that from a lot of people who have experienced um early childhood trauma and traumatic events but over the years when I was persona non grata. It was tremendously painful to me. Uh, and yet I always said, I will be here with love and acceptance and gratitude and forgiveness when you come back. And they came back. They don't live in my consciousness as, oh my God, I can't believe you did that to me. Or, you know, because they also have, oh my God, I can't believe you did that to me by writing the book. So it's a, it's fair exchange. So. I love them. They love me. We're in contact. Being, having two celebrity sisters, you and China, who, with as we've talked about, a super celebrity dad. What was that dynamic like? Was there a sibling rivalry, and how has that relationship been? You know, throughout the years. Well, no, there wasn't. I was nine when China was born, mm -hmm. and also I have another sister named Bijou Phillips, who is famous in her own right. So, no, there really wasn't because. Uh, you know, I, I was so much older than, than she was. She grew up with her mom, Michelle, mm -hmm. by the time, I mean, by the time, you know, she was old enough to hang out with me, I was in my twenties, you know, so we, we, I don't remember ever being like, oh, I got a better TV show than you did or anything like mm -hmm. that. Now I do remember when Wilson Phillips came out and I would listen to hold on and just cry. Like, How come? It was so beautiful. The little baby Chai was singing her heart out and I wasn't sober. I was, you know, lucky to be alive at that point. I mean, I was still very mm -hmm. deep in my addiction. And I know this pain. Why do you lock yourself up in these chains? No one can change your life except for you. I'm like, oh my God, she's talking directly to me. But you know, mm -hmm. it was just, it was just a very. Was it, was it to you or was it, no. did it just no. feel that way for you? Yeah. It's like when I listen to a Joni Mitchell song that was recorded 50 years ago, I'm like, Joni was talking to me. You know, you, you hear something and it's meaningful and it, and it hits you right where you live. Like I'm not cuckoo. I don't think Joni Mitchell was talking directly to me. I just want everybody to know that. No, it's a good, a good song. It makes you think that it's written for you. Exactly. It feels that, it feels that way. It feels so that when way. So when you look back at your career, I mean, you've had a ton of accomplishments. Uh, I mean, some of the big ones that stick out, American Graffiti, One Day at a Time. But in, in addition to that, Orange is the New Black, 
hit shows all throughout the years and doing singing as well. Is there something that sticks out as like, wow, this is the one thing that is my biggest accomplishment. I can't believe I did it. Well, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't say my biggest accomplishment. I can't believe I did it, but I would talk about my favorite. I did a Disney Channel show called So Weird. It was so much, it's on Disney Plus, if anybody wants to check it out. I played a mom who was a rock star traveling in a tour bus with her two kids. And um, there was a paranormal aspect to it, but I got to be a rock star. You know, I've always considered myself an actress who can sing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done Broadway, I've done all different kinds of stuff, but on So Weird, I got to do them both at the same time, all while having the Mickey Mouse stamp of approval. You know, here I am, a woman who is, you know, uh, known for having substance use problems and being fired from TV, blah, blah, blah. And then I get hired to play a mom on the Disney Channel. It was tremendously meaningful to me. I want to say congratulations for, you know, for going through what you've gone through and to become at the place in your life where you're at right now. For people out there that may be in not such a good place that want to get to where you are, tell us what's your advice for them? And then also tell us more about the Breathe Life Healing Center and how people can get, get involved. I uh, was um, scheduled to uh, appear on the Rachel Ray show with the cast of One Day at a Time. It was Rachel Ray's 40th birthday, blah, blah, blah. And so we were all flying to New York to surprise her. And the night before I was supposed to get on the plane, uh, I'll just be very transparent here. I was shooting dope. Mm-hmm injecting and thinking to myself, God, I hope I don't die, but I might. Please, God, can you help me? The very next day, you have the right to remain silent. And that is the moment my life changed. Now, I don't recommend going out and getting arrested for felony possession in order to get clean because there are much easier ways to do it. Yeah. Um, there are resources for us, people like me, to get the help that they need. Uh, you know, there are many ways to the top of a mountain. The destination is the same. Happy, joyous, free, and not a burden on the family, and actually being of service to those around you. You can get there. It just, you have to, you have to take a shot, and you have to pick up the phone and call someone you trust and say, I can't live this way anymore. I'm afraid I'm going to die. I really need some help. Very well said. All right. Well, Mackenzie, I know we can go to breathelifehealingcenters.com to find out more about you. Is there any, any other places that we could find out more about you? Um, you know, uh, social media handles, at Mac Phillips, M-A-C-K, not M-A-C, at Mac Phillips, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Mackenzie Phillips on Facebook. Um, and uh, Breathe Life Healing Center. You can go to our website, breathelifehealingcenters.com. We do not have a traditional call center. When you, if you call, you will be connected to someone who's literally at our clinic, not someone you know who knows nothing about treatment or recovery. We have uh, intake counselors, not call center people. So we are here, we love you and we care. All right. Well, Mackenzie Phillips, it has truly been an honor to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate you. The CW crew on the CW Twin Cities, DJ Vonix, Alexa Score, and John Foss. Like, follow, subscribe to, and love the CW crew.